try to get um hello hi there um uh, i know uh sandy and um sean both told me they couldn't be here tonight um but I'm not sure where the rest of our quorum is, but hopefully we'll get there in a minute. Um, so hello and welcome to the Crozet CAC meeting. And um, this meeting is being held pursuant to and in compliance with emergency ordinance number 20-A16 and emergency ordinance to ensure the continuity of government during the COVID. Um, and now we will go around and introduce ourselves, the committee members. I'm Ali Pesh. Um, this is my last night as chair of this committee, <laughs> and I live near Mid Springs. Is it easier for me to just call on you guys instead of wait, <laughs> Valerie? I'm Valerie Long. Um, I live in Old Trail. Uh, Michael? Michael Monaco, um, Emerson Commons neighborhood by Star Hill. And Costas? Costas Alberta, so I live at on 250. Uh, Jim? Hey, Jim Duncan, Parkside. Mark? Mark McKenney, Westall. Joe? Joe Four Highlands. All right, did I miss any committee members? Yes, Ken Becker, he's new. Oh, hi, Ken. Sorry. Hi, That's okay. <laughs> uh, Ken Thacker from hi. St. George Avenue. Thanks for being here. Um, all right, so the persons responsible for receiving public comment are the community, Crozet Community Advisory Committee. Opportunities for the public to access and participate in the electronic meeting are posted on the Amaral County calendar. Um, and then tonight, um, staff, we have Carolyn, our clerk. I see Rebecca Ragsdale and Kevin, Kevin McCollum. <laughs> All right. We have our county staff and other members present. And um, that's it. Now we would normally um, vote on the minutes. I'm not sure someone can tell me if we have enough people to do that yet. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Is that enough? I think it is because we don't have a full committee right now. Joe, do you know? Or Valerie? Good question. I'll check the roster right now. <laughs> it looks like you have, um, let's see, 15 members. So you need eight. Well, All right. yeah, eight will be fine. Okay, does anybody, um, does everybody get a chance to review the meeting minutes from March? And did anybody have corrections? Would anybody like to make a motion to approve those minutes? Costas, thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, <laughs> thank you. All right. Um, vote to adopt the minutes. Everybody in favor say aye. Aye. Thumbs up. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Um, so tonight we are hosting um, Daylily Preschool who has applied for a special use permit. And I'll turn it over to um, whoever of staff is going to introduce them. <laughs> Um, Kevin, uh, I guess typically we start with the staff overview of the application and the process, and then we'll turn it over to Elizabeth, and Kevin's going to be 
pulling up his presentation and, and walking you through the proposal. Um, so thanks, thanks just, getting that, just getting that pulled up right now. I'm getting Sorry acclimated to, to Zoom. <laughs> I uh, my internet crashed like, right right before you sent it over to me. I was like, oh. <laughs> oh, it's all right. No, you know, no worries. Um is there any uh, discussion of CACs going in person? Not that I, not yet. I'm sure we'll let you know as soon as that will happen. I'm uh, eagerly anticipating that change. <laughs> I don't know if some people would like it or if you prefer Zoom, but um, okay, Kevin's ready, it looks like. So, oh. everyone see my screen? Got it. Looks good. Okay, sounds good. Um, so good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Kevin McCollum, and I'm a senior planner with the Elmore County Department of Community Development. I'm currently the lead staff member reviewing this application, SP 2022-3, uh, the Daylily Preschool. Uh, tonight's the required community meeting for this application. There will be a presentation by staff, uh, followed by a presentation by the applicant. Uh, the presentations will be followed by a period where members of the public or the CAC can ask questions or share any thoughts or concerns. Um, so first, I just wanted to give a brief overview of staff's presentation. I'm gonna go through uh, the purpose of a community meeting, uh, quickly talk about our two different types of main um, development review types and our review processes. I'm then gonna to touch on legislative items, um, specifically special use permits uh, in a bit more detail. And then lastly, I'm just gonna go through some of the brief information, brief background on the proposal we're here to discuss tonight before kicking it over to Elizabeth um, to give the applicant's presentation. So first, um, the purpose of a community meeting is to share information and receive public input. A community meeting is a chance for members of the public to learn about a proposed project, the development review process, and any relevant regulations that staff may consider when reviewing the application. It's also an opportunity for the applicant to share any of the specifics about the project, uh, for questions to be answered, and for members of the public to share comments or concerns. Uh, one thing I do want to say is that staff uh, and CAC members here are not taking any action on this proposal tonight. Uh, meaning we're not going to make any final decisions on whether this is going to be approved or denied. Um, as I'll discuss in further detail here shortly, the Board of Supervisors is the body that has the authority to approve or deny this application. Um, so the meeting here tonight is simply a chance for staff, the applicant, CAC members, and members of the public to share info and ask questions. So I'm going to quickly talk about the development re review process in Elmar County. Um, so there's two main review process types that occur when development is proposed in Elmar County. There's administrative review uh, and then there's legislative review. Administrative review occurs for what is called by right development. Um, so these types of applications are reviewed by community development staff in all of our partner agencies for compliance with applicable codes and regulations, including the zoning ordinance, the subdivision ordinance, the building code, uh, water protection, um, among others. So if the development in administrative review application meets all of those relevant regulations and codes, staff can approve that application. Uh, legislative review is a development review type um, that applies to applications that need board of supervisors approval. Um, and this includes special use permits and zoning map amendments. Uh, these types of applications are reviewed by all the same staff, but require a public hearing and recommendation by the Planning Commission uh, before ultimately being approved or denied by the Board of Supervisors. Um, so when it comes to uses or what you can do on or with your property, the zoning ordinance is pretty specific when, lays, when it lays out what uses are permitted by right uh, and what uses are permitted by special use permit. Um, if, if a use is found in the list of uses permitted by right, uh, then an application can be reviewed administratively and approved by staff. If a use is found in the list of uses permitted by special use permit, then the application must be a legislative item uh, and approved or denied by the Board of Supervisors. 
Uh, the zoning ordinance also lays out criteria uh, that you can see on the screen here for staff to consider when evaluating a special use permit. Um, so when reviewing one of these applications, staff uh, does their best to determine whether the proposed use will have impacts on neighboring parcels, change the character of the area, be in harmony with the intent of the zoning ordinance, and whether it's consistent with the comprehensive plan and recommendations of the property. Um, after evaluating these factors, the Board of Supervisors um, can approve certain conditions to try to mitigate the impacts of the proposed use. <clears throat> uh, so like I said in the beginning, I'm going to quickly go through a little bit about the daily preschool application before kicking it over to uh, the applicant to discuss the finer details. So beginning with some existing conditions, the property is located at 4281 and 4297 Old Three Notch Road. It's in uh, Western Elmore County, uh, just to the east of the Crozet uh, area. Um, it's currently zoned rural areas and is about four acres in size. Uh, there is an existing special use permit uh, for the property at 4283. Um, this permitted a preschool for up to 20 students. So tonight's or this proposal, this new special use permit um, is to move the existing preschool, uh, as you can see on the map there at 4283 Old Three Notch into uh, the property at 4297 uh, Old Three Notch Road. Um, they're also looking to increase the maximum capacity or the maximum number of students to 50 students, and I believe five teachers. Uh, parents will use the existing church's parking lot and will escort children to and from the proposed daycare facility. Um, so you can see on the screen here, uh, the Mountain Plain Baptist Church is the property at 4281. Um, and so the proposed school building is located on the adjacent property, but both properties are actually owned by the church. Lastly, I wanted to touch on the future land use and comprehensive plan recommendation for the property. As you can see in the map on the screen, the property is just to the east of the Crozet Master Plan area. Uh, the rural area chapter of the comprehensive plan has, de has designated the property as rural area land use. Um, and the intent of the rural area designation is to allow uses that preserve and protect agricultural, forestal, open space, and natural historic and, and scenic re resources. Also allows residential uses up to 0.5 dwelling units per acre. Um, staff will further evaluate the existing conditions and future land use recommendations when completing their review and writing the staff report for this application. So I've also included a few pictures here just to um, kind of give an idea. We can you know, circle back to these if we need. This is an aerial showing um, the church and the adjacent building on the church property and then um, the, what, what I believe was a house over in the bottom left corner. So that's the proposed school building. Um, here's a photo from the Southern side of the property, kind of an aerial showing um, a bit of the elevation of the properties. And then this is a photo from the east Eastern side. Um, so lastly, just wanted to go over the timeline. So like I said, staff's currently reviewing this application. Um, our comments are due to the applicant April 25th. It's a Monday, it's in about two weeks. Uh, we haven't set a planning commission or board of supervisors date. Uh, when we send those comments to the applicant, they'll, whatever our comments may be, they'll have the option to either go to the planning commission directly or to you know, take some time to try to address our comments and then resubmit. If we resubmit, um, that planning commission date might be further, further out. Um, but I'm also putting my, my contact here on the screen if anyone wants to send me their you know, comments directly or if they wanna you know, be kept in the loop for uh, those public hearing dates that are to be, to be scheduled. Um, so with that, um, I can kick it over to Elizabeth to uh, give a presentation or you know, talk about the project in a little bit more detail. Hi, good evening. Um, like you said, my name is Elizabeth Clayman, and I'm currently the director and lead teacher at Daylily Preschool. 
Um, I'd like to share with you some slides first, um, just to give you a little snapshot of our day um, at preschool. So we'll start with that. So Daylily's been in operation for over 10 years, and the goal of the preschool is to prepare children socially, cognitively, and physically for kindergarten. Um, the children learn reading, art, math, science, and social skills in a safe, nurturing environment. Um, the child-centered play-based curriculum is an essential part of um, creating lifelong learners, and that's our philosophy. Um, as a reading specialist, I do individualize all their daily lessons for children ages uh, 16 months to five years. Um, the children are actively involved in small group learning centers throughout the day, and um, the children are immersed in a language-rich environment. Um, they read multiple books throughout the day. We always have book characters and authors of the month going on. Um, the alphabets taught through letters and letter sounds. Um, writing is a big part of our day and writing in journals, rhyming activities and poetry is, are also um, a part of what we do. Um, the preschoolers create original works of art um, we, through process art. They learn how to draw colors, shapes um, and make lots of collages. Math is taught using manipulatives and counting objects, measuring patterns and games are also a part of it. Um, children are exposed to science by using their five senses, sensory tables, and um, through experiments. Um, we love our natural playground. It's a wooded setting, and we have lots of um, structured and unstructured games going on throughout the day. Um, the proposed program would run 8.30 to 5.30, and the children would um, occupy the preschool's first floor and the lower floor with the walkout basement. Um, we'd initially start with about 30 children and um, may eventually get up to, say, 50. Um, the children will be escorted by the parents or teachers down to the preschool, and then the teachers will bring the children back up to the front parking lot at the half-day time at 1230 and 3.30, and again, possibly at 530 At this time, we're just thinking about 830 to 330, but we'd like to leave 530 open. Um, the preschool will operate from an existing building and there's no parking lot um, or building changes planned uh, at this time. And a preschool in Western Albemarle will help reduce the traffic from Crozet area into Charlottesville. Um, the intention is to continue serving in Western Albemarle area. Daylily Preschool uh, will provide a local option for our fast growing community. Thank you. Thank you. I, I'm happy to answer any questions. I'm sorry if I went too fast. No, that was fine. Um, it seems like that's covered the basics. So 
I'll open it up to the committee and if anybody in the public has questions, just uh, press that raise hand button. Hi, Anne. Joe? Thanks, Allie. Uh, full disclosure, uh, my, I had a child who, who previously went to Day Lily. Hi, Lily. Hi, uh, good to see you. <laughs> and I have children who, who may attend Day Lily in the future, so this is, is nice to see uh, this presentation. Um, I was just looking back at the materials, Lily, that, um, that you submitted to the to county. And so I was just a, a couple of questions about the, the expansion ideas. Um, is the thought, are all of the children are all the classes moving to the new building or are they gonna split be split between some in the old building at the church and some in the new building? Is that the thought? So if the proposed plan goes through, it would mean that we would leave our the building we're currently in and going over to the other um, building entirely. Okay. And and I get and it sounded like you said the idea, because right now are you you're still operating half day only up to twelve thirty, is it right? And so the idea twelve thirty. Okay, great. And so the thought would be to offer an option for a half day program that ends at 1230 like you do now, or a full day option, maybe I assume for some of the bigger kids to go to 330. That's correct. Okay, great. Uh, and did I did I see in your drawing too, there's also um, you're planning on, you know, as part of this to, to add an, another playground or a new playground behind the, the new building. That's correct. So we would actually be using both playgrounds. So one playground's already established, but we're going to do another natural playground in the back. Um, you know, it, 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 it won't be a big structure or anything like that. It'll be more like um, play sensory tables and um, playhouses and things like that. Small, Wonderful. on the small side. <laughs> yeah. Wonderful. Thank you. And I just, I, I just want to say again, I, you know, we've attended, we were extremely thrilled. We loved our experience there and we hope to be back. Um, and I just say, I, I think that Lily's comments are spot on about having this kind of facility out here in Western Albemarle. Um, and those of us with small children, Mark, I know, and others, I mean, childcare is at a premium. And so I think this kind of proposal is, is excellent um, in helping us to stay out here in Crozet and, and keep good childcare out here. Thank you, Joe. Thanks, Ken. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Sorry, you're still muted. Hey, Lily, I apologize. I may have missed. Um, could you clarify the the number, the maximum number of pupils that you have on site now and compare that to the maximum number that could be on site on the combined properties um, if the plan is approved? <laughs> So currently in the basement that I'm in, at the lower level of the preschool, I have 17, but I'm hoping to go to 50. As okay. a, I mean, eventually, like basically, I think it's going to take several years for that to happen. And I'd really like to start small and keep the numbers small. Um, so really looking more at, say, 30. I just am hoping not to go through the process. You know, I, I think this is my third time going through the county <laughs> trying to um, make things work um, and grow the program. Thanks. Okay, Valerie. thank you. Thank you. I was just gonna um, echo the comments made about how critical additional childcare is in the Crozet area. My kids aren't very young anymore, but they were once and I remember the challenges and struggles of finding quality care. So I applaud you for expanding and growing. And I know it's a big step to take that on. Thanks. Thank you. Mark? Yeah. Um, first, I wish you the best of luck. I look forward to hopefully seeing this grow in, in the area. Um, do you think um, on the topic of the child care, do you think you would ever get to a place where you might be able to look at after school elementary programs as well as that is also a uh, care issue that we see locally? I would definitely consider it. Um, at this time, I'm, I'm really focused more on, you know, the younger children, um, really 16 months to five years of age, but um, I wouldn't be opposed to it. Good. Anybody else have questions or comments? Yeah. 
Thank you. I'm sorry I was late having computer snafus here. Uh, do you have experiences, good, bad, or neutral, with traffic, truck traffic on your doorstep at the moment? No, it, it, um, at the moment, it's it's very quiet um, on our road there. Um, again, we're outside quite frequently, and um, we don't have a, a great deal of traffic on the on Old Three Notch Road. Okay, I'm relieved to hear that. Thank you. <clears throat> Good. Well, um, yeah, I think that offering more more spots um, at nearby preschools is definitely going to be good. So I hope this is able to work out for you. Oh, thank you. Sorry, Allie, just go ahead, Joe. Yeah. yeah, Lily, just in terms of I don't know what you're thinking in terms of timing um, with all of this with the obviously there's still planning commission and, and board of supervisors <laughs> is your hope to be able to expand here, for example, for the next like school year, like that time period or um, that would be little, ideal. Yeah, when, is, that's when you're hoping to be able to make the move to that yes. new building. Yes, I have a waiting list, and um, you know, I'm, I'm really hoping to make it work um, and be able to open after Labor Day um, in the new facility. That's the plan. Um, so we'll see what happens. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I see Ali stepped out. I guess as the vice chair, I will then step in. <laughs> it's my one duty. Oh, wait, she's back. Thank you. Yeah, if you wouldn't oh, no. mind, I'm having like, I'm I'm solo parenting and having an issue over here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no problem. Thank no, you. No problem, I'll, I'll take it. Um, are there, were there any other comments from anyone else on the committee or any of the attendees? I see we do have some in the community joining us. I don't know if anybody else had a comment. We don't have anybody in the attendees with their hand raised at this time. Thank you. Uh, Kevin or Rebecca, anything else from the planning side, from county side? I don't I don't have anything. I think um, as long as I think um, if anyone else has any questions for Kevin, he's available. Um, but it sounds like um, you all have what you need and have asked your questions. I just wondered if there was anyone that was notified of the community meeting, had any questions or had joined in. Um, but other than that, no, I don't think so. All right. And uh, Kevin, I think you said that the next uh, April 25th, the comments are due, and then from there it goes to the Planning Commission and the board. Yep, that's correct. So we're um, basically in the process of reviewing it right now on you know, receiving comments um, from all of our applicable reviewers, compiling those, and then We'll be sending those out by April 25th. Um, then, like you said, uh, then go into planning commission at, and board of supervisors at some point. Thank you. All right, Allie, back to you. Cool. Well, seems pretty simple, and I think we can move on. So, thanks for coming. And yeah, you have our you have our support. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> Great. Good luck. Thank you. I appreciate it. And I appreciate y'all come being here tonight. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for coming. Um, so all we have um, else on our agenda, I think, is um, committee committee business. Okay, so I, I need to leave. <laughs> okay, no, you guys, See if I can find, you're find a way to get out of here. <laughs> You don't need to be here, but you're welcome to stay. <laughs> um, so I nominate Joe for chair. <laughs> I think we already established that, um, but we will be looking for nominations for vice chair and um, secretary. The volunteers. Hey, Allie, I'll nominate myself for vice chair. Thanks, Mark. Anybody else uh, want to throw in or I will or leave solicit, that? I will solicit nominations for the secretary position. I would love for someone to volunteer for that. No one should have to do it for more than a year <laughs> or two. I'm not sure how many years you've done, Valerie. Mike did it for a really long time, so. 
You don't have to be a lawyer, by the way, to, to, to be the secretary. It just definitely, so happens. You definitely don't. <laughs> the law, law degree is not required to, to be. Does seem to be the prerequisite, though. <laughs> well, the bylaws. Four different lawyers over the years, which is pretty fabulous, <laughs> actually. <laughs> Gary Tereskers and Greg and Barlow and Joe and Valerie. So that's pretty that's amazing. pretty funny. Well, if it will encourage anyone to step up, I tried to take notes and I'm happy to share my semi-pathetic notes with whoever the secretary is at the end of each meeting. So yeah, they don't have to be um, very extensive, especially now that all of the meetings are recorded and posted on Zoom. Um, Yes, it's, and that part helps a lot when you're going back and filling in <laughs> things. That yeah, is you very can, helpful. We used to have to keep an attendance sheet. Now we've got that electronically. So lots of uh, just someone wants to do it. I see um, opening your mouth like oh yeah. this little push. <laughs> the 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 length of pause in nominations was enough to pressure me. Um no, I'm, I'm happy to nominate <laughs> myself for the position. Um as long as uh, Valerie, you can, you can hand it off to me, tell me what to do. <laughs> I don't think you have to pry it from her now. <laughs> I will happily send you prior meeting minutes as templates for your suggestions or can, to make it easy for you. That's what I do is each week, I, each month, I just change the dates and start fresh with the same template. Yeah. <laughs> so, I think I can handle it. I'm not a lawyer though, so. We'll see. Thank you, Michael. I appreciate it. So um, I think I think that calls for a vote. I'm not actually sure the you know um, rules on how we uh, do it. We have voted for a slate in the past, or you have, I should say. I'm listening in, but you all have voted for a slate in the past. If there's someone who wants to nominate the slate, then that would be one way to go. So, okay, so Costas is uh, making a motion to for, for those yep, three. I'll motion that we vote as a slate, thanks. Okay, and I'm assuming we need a second. I can second. <laughs> um, and I think we established, I mean, I know Carolyn said we have 15, but I don't think we actually have 15 members right now, right? And I counted 12 on the roster, 11. So I'm pretty sure we have a quorum. Yeah, regardless of that, I think we got we've got eight, right? Yeah. So regardless, even if we did 15, we're good. So um I'll just say everybody um approves of this slate can say aye, raise your hand, thumbs up. We have any opposed. <laughs> Okay. All right. Congratulations. Thanks for your service. Um, so uh, any other news or announcements to discuss? Um, I'm not looking at the agenda. So if there was another item, let me know. Anne? I don't know if I was a few minutes late, so I don't know if anybody made an announcement about Jenny hurting her back. So I did not. I did not uh, broach that yet. I wanted you to be here. Yeah. She was hoping very much to be here tonight to share herself uh, the fact that her back is so, so challenging for her right now that she was not even able to be able to attend uh, virtually this time. So she has sent in her official resignation from the Planning Commission because she just couldn't do both get well and do that job. And I was only concerned that she give herself a chance to get well first. And then she's young and there's plenty more life left to, uh, to do lots more for the community when she gets well. So she just wanted to be able to share with you how important your job is and how grateful she is for all the work that you all do for the community and that she will be slogging in as much as she can as an individual citizen, but really wants to encourage all of you to keep up the good work and to represent Crozet really well. So thank you all for allowing me to convey that message for her. Thanks, Anne. Thanks for 
sharing and um you know let the let the minute show that um we really appreciated jenny's service and she's been a great planning commissioner and we hope that she um feels better soon i know it was really hard for her to um have to turn um you know have to resign before her term was up so it was not an easy decision but absolutely i agree she needs to uh get well first <laughs> so we're wishing her the best and um, that's that um is there anything else I will share um, that we are in planning for the Crozet um, Fourth of July parade and fireworks, and we would love um, everyone to help who's able. Um, so keep your keep keep your ears open for ways to get involved, and also remember that the fireworks are entirely community funded, and so. Um, consider donating so that we can have a fireworks show. And Joe, I saw your hand go up first. Do you have something? Yeah. Thanks, Allie. Um, first, I just want to thank Allie for her service as chair oh, for the past you. two years, right? So um, thank you. Um, I think four. Four or four? Five. Two, four, five, how many? Yeah, we like changed the rules so that I could keep being chair. So. That's right, it? it's time for me to pass on pass this on yeah um and uh i just wanted to, to point out right and we we don't yet have anyone who's taking jenny's spot on the planning commission so it, it, is it, am i right there's an open seat on the whitehall planning commission that is correct and uh one ca interested folks please encourage people whom you think would do a great job to do the online application which should be posted by now uh, since her uh, Jenny's official resignation was submitted. And uh, so then that will be, we will interview people and uh, make a new choice for, for the, the last, until December of 23 would be the end of the term. And uh, my assignment as part of the 4th of July discussion at the last meeting was to also reach out to each of you who is in a different neighborhood. And so to, her help to engage your homeowners associations and neighbors in supporting the fireworks and the Independence Day uh, weekend events with circulating the helping to circulate the fundraising letter or the fireworks letter or any of those kinds of things. So please encourage your uh, HOA contact person to reach out and they can certainly reach out to me and then I will pass it along. I know Tim will be away on a bucket list trip to Alaska this summer. So there'll be others who will be stepping in to carry the mantle forward for the month of, of June and July for him. But we look forward to another fabulous day and huge turnout of our friends and neighbors. And at the very beginning, did I miss uh, having Jimmy and uh, Ken give a little Hello, here I am. Oh, November no, we need to, no, we need to 30 seconds. Yeah, I would, uh, we, we so need to I would love to have them do that. I'll put them on the spot effectively right now. <laughs> so, Jimmy, can you go first and tell us a little bit about yourself? I remember at my some of the very earliest CCAC meetings, Jim was going toe to toe with the principal at Henley who had said that children could not ride bicycles to school even with a parent with them. And that did not last long because of the perseverance of many of our parents, but particularly Jimmy on that one. So take it away. Thank you. That was a long time ago, Ann. Um, yes. Wow. Uh, no, Jim Duncan, I've you know, lived in Crozet for 20 some odd years, I think. Uh, my wife and I moved out here about 20 years ago with our, with our girls. Um, yeah, realtor, Nest Realty um been here forever been in charleston for most of my life and uh you know looking forward to to speaking a, a tiny bit more than i did before uh because in the many many years i attended meetings i think i spoke two or three times um good tend to, be, tend to be quiet so thanks thank you and ken tell us a little quick about yourself please sure um i'm a uh uh, almost a 17 year resident of Crozet. So I feel like I'm transitioning from newcomer to uh, middle-aged Crozet resident, uh, hardly an old timer. 
uh, one day I hope to be. Um, I'm an architect. Uh, I've had the really good fortune of designing schools all over the place, but um, to be able to work on some of them for kids who I know here in Crozet have, has been especially rewarding. So very happy to be here. I've been on the DCI for several years um, and that is a, uh, feel like the, the most, uh, the greatest little nonprofit that nobody knows about. Um, so we're um, really enjoying working with Frank Stoner on the Barnes Lumber Project. And uh, I'm, I'm very excited about, about the momentum that, that we see there, even though sometimes it feels like it's moving at a glacial pace, I feel like it's gonna happen. Good. Good to hear. Thank you all very much. Yeah, thanks for having me. Glad you both joined. So, Anne, do, do we still have openings? Are we going to be able to fill ourselves out? I think there is still one more spot. If I can, I did not look it up this afternoon, so I will have to get my packet out for the next meeting and make sure. Uh, we do have, I know there's at least one more applicant. Uh, whose forms have been received. And, and I think that was for the uh, third spot, which was available. So that okay. good. I'm, I'm looking at the roster and I only count 11 people. So we'll see. Okay. Very good. <laughs> um, Joe. Thanks, Allie. Um, and I just wanted to follow up um, maybe from a, a few months ago when we talked about the, um, the Montclair property. Mm -hmm. And I wanna circle back. I know there was a community meeting um, that I, I believe the topic came up. I, I wanted to kind of circle back and, and just ask about the, the, the creek. I know there was a lot of discussion of the creek or the missing creek or the disappearing creek. Um, and there was mention of following up with the county engineer. And I, I don't know if that ever got resolution, if they revisited that or if they just confirm their findings? Well, the findings have been confirmed with the existing policy, which we have. And there's been a lot of investigation on the part of various county staff members, lots of correspondence. And so I do not think our current rules would require that the stream be left open at the moment. That doesn't mean I've given up and there are discussions going forward, but uh, I do hope we will find some other way to deal with it so that it, we protect the open airness of the streams. I mean, other communities which have piped things such as the University of Virginia, for example, had a whole, all of their streams underground and they've spent a lot of time and effort and money to daylight them because they've understood the benefits of stormwater and the, the environment, et cetera, for having streams at the surface. So. I do hope that we will make some progress, but as far as county rules being uh, handled, that seems to have been done according to, to rule. And it is one of the more complicated features because we have the water protection ordinance, which is local and under 10,000 square feet, uh, over 10,000 square feet is required of disturbance before extra enforcement can take place. And then we have federal rules that the Army Corps of Engineers takes care of, and that's, making sure that things don't go into the water. They don't have anything to do with stream buffers. And so there's, <laughs> it's, it's been uh, very hard to handle because all of us, I think, have the same goal to try to protect the waterway. And we just haven't found the solution that we can uh, connect with yet. Thank you very much, Ann. Thanks for bringing that up. Go ahead, Mark. Yeah, real quick. So Ms. Malik, to carry on with what Joe just brought up, can, can, we, um, can, can we get informed on where that application is? Um, I've had a few surrounding neighborhoods inquire, ask me about when is it going to the planning commission? Um, so I guess kind of, is there a way we can let the Crozet community know where it's at when it's scheduled to go to the planning commission and so forth. I think Rachel is, I mean, uh, Rebecca is ready to jump back in as our Crozet planner. She's back. Oh, I'm back. <laughs> it's only been 15 years. Um, 
No, but I'm helping cover community meetings when we have, you know, when the primary focus is development review um, community meetings. So I'm now the planning manager for development review, which includes site plans, subdivisions, special use permits, and rezonings like Montclair that Cameron is working on. It's not scheduled right now. Um, it's not going to be scheduled in April or May. Um, the public notice sign, you know, at a minimum, the public notice sign will go up. The, the property will be posted, and then the abutting owners will be notified, and we can let you all know when it does get scheduled. Um, so it's still under review, and it's not scheduled for a planning commission public hearing yet. But there would be at least a month of notice before it would go to the planning commission. For well, the um, neighbors, at least, or for us or something. It's at least two weeks notice for the, for, you know, for the legal, for the legal notices to go yes. out and the, um, the sign to go up, you know, Cameron has received a number of emails and Frank, uh, you know, about the stream buffer questions. So we kind of will let, you know, the distribution list, if you will, that we have, we'll let them know when it's scheduled. Um, because we do know more than two weeks in advance when we're planning on scheduling something and we have to get the legal ad in like three weeks in advance. So, and I think you're right. It'll be about a, a month's notice that we know it's on the, on the calendar. Um, we'll Thank keep you all posted. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Oh wait, I guess I'm the chair now. <laughs> I guess yeah. I guess I have, I had to. I'm waiting for you, Allie, if I can. Okay. You're I guess welcome it, it's to uh, you're welcome to say our closing. Do you have the closing? I don't. Uh, I don't even remarks? have. It. That would have been presumptuous. <laughs> right. Well, um, I want to get back to end myself. I'm happy to send us off if I can find them myself. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes, yeah. sometimes Rachel sends me a run of show, and sometimes. I use an old one. Um, it's also on top of the agenda, if that helps. Yeah, except I don't have that <laughs> I have it. I'll, I'm happy to read it. That helps. I have it. I have oh. it. Um, so you, got the, it. you got it? You want to go, no, you, you No, you have it. You have it. <laughs> Aww. Um, all right. So the uh, Crows ACAC next meeting is tentatively scheduled for May 11th at 7 p.m. Um, opportunities for the public to access and participate in the electronic meeting will be posted at a later date in accordance with emergency ordinance number 20-A16 and open meetings, open meeting requirements of the Virginia Freedom of Information Act. So um, that's it. Goodbye. Thanks for coming and see you next time.